right, today it's Friday, June 26th, 2020. I have a fun example for you guys today. This is a prajna or a horary example. This is the type of astrology where we cast a chart based on the exact moment. The moment a question is asked. So the astrology of the hour, horary, is what it was called in the Western traditions. In the Indian traditions, it's called prajna, which means a question or questioning or just consulting the gods or deva prajna, which means consulting the gods. So this is a very practical and efficient system of astrology. I've done a number of examples. I think this will be number seven, example number seven. I like to specialize on lost objects. And so in my life, I had been working on uh, my garden a lot this year with the pandemic and the lockdown and all that stuff. I was already planning on doing that. So I, I planted even more fruit trees this year. And one of the trees I planted last year was a Burbank peach tree, a Luther Burbank peach tree. And I was really proud of it. And this was the first year that I was going to get the peaches. Okay. And I did eat to get, I did get to eat some of the peaches. I had three and they were the best peaches of my life. Okay. So good, so delicious, so juicy. Then the night after the eclipse, the night before that, I, I was just like feeling, I don't know why I didn't pick some and save them then, but I was like, ooh, they're just ripening. And you know how it's so much nicer to let the fruit ripen on the tree. So I was waiting one more night, not gonna eat anymore. And I was eager to eat them for breakfast the next morning, you know? And sure enough, that morning, I believe it was Monday morning, I go and look and they're all gone. And I was heartbroken. I was so devastated. Um, there aren't a lot of things in this world that I'm that attached to, like I was those peaches, because I put so much work into them. So as I've said before, when you are in a, the more emotion, the more you're feeling, the more invested you are in a question, the better it is to act, you know, send that email right then to your astrologer, or if you are an astrologer, to cast a chart for yourself or for the person. And if you're casting a chart for yourself, cast it for the moment it first came into your mind, the, the moment the first question, the question was born in your mind, not later when you decide you want to know about it. You have to be able to remember that time. All right, so this is the chart of who stole the peaches. But <laughs> Leo is rising and you know obviously I'm asking if I will get my peaches back that's sort of implied in the question and it is a fixed sign rising when you have a fixed sign it means everything's fixed so there's going to be no change so you're not going to get the peaches back that's one indication if it had been a changeable sign maybe something was going to change you see all right so that's not the strongest factor though, but I did factor it. All right, so then I looked at the Ascendant Lord is going to the 12th. The Ascendant Lord, the Sun is going to the 12th. 12th house is the house of loss. So it's saying I'm gonna lose the peaches, right? Another interesting thing is that Leo is the sign of uh, pride. And I was very, very proud of these peaches. I was so proud, I was, I was very proud of them. And uh, Leo is also a, um, sign of one's territory, one's own territory. And so this, when you have the ascendant, the Lagna is just like how the Lagna shows the theme of your life, the Lagna in a Prajna shows the, the uh, theme, the story, you know, you get an idea of what's going on. So even if no one had questioned, had told me what they were asking, and this was the chart I was being presented with, I might guess that, okay, it deals with one's own property, one's own territory, one's own place one's own kingdom. It also is a mula sign. The fixed rashis are mula rashis, which deal with plants. So it's not a datu or a, um, or a, a jiva dual sign. It is a fixed sign, which is a mula, which relates to the plant kingdom. Just so you guys know, when it comes to prajna, this is where you get to use all those cool significations that you learn about in those old books. Like for example, Mercury rules, the sky go or the vihaga form or whatever mercury and sun rule the birds moon rules the creeping forms of animals or whatever uh jupiter and venus rule the bipeds mars and saturn rule the quadruped forms of animals so you know i was thinking this is maybe it was a wild animal that stole it so i needed to think on that okay well is it a bird is it what you know um all right so 
the one thing you got to know about prajna is that in all robbery prajnas, basically the first house is the person asking the question, the fourth house and use the cusps, use the campanus cusps and all, or you would be way off on this prajna. It's a good example. The fourth cusp is in Libra, the third sign. But either way, fourth cusp is the goods, the item, the treasured thing that was stolen. That is uh, really cool too, because in the old days, your wealth and your goods would be buried underground most of the time, and the fourth house is the place beneath you underground. So it's kind of cool how it still works though in modern day parlance, and I've used this. This is the seventh example, so go watch my other videos if you need to know more about that. And then the seventh house is the robber or the thief. The tenth house, the old books don't say, but I'm pretty sure it means that the, the overall outcome of the, the overall result. All right, so one more thing before I get into it. You can also tell just by analyzing this ascendant, which we haven't even left this yet, Venus and Saturn are the only planets throwing really tight aspects to that three degrees of Leo ascendant. That's showing you that the focus is about agriculture, hard work, um, farming, gardening. That's Saturn. Saturn was Kronos, the god of agriculture. Um, and then Venus is rewards, the reward of all that work. Okay, so... Now we're looking at Lagna Lord. Yes, so the Lagna Lord is going to um, the 12th house, like I said, the house of loss. It's in the sign of the moon, sign of cancer. Cancer, if you watch my videos on all about the cancer Rashi and other, the, this Zodiac and the Environment series, I've done two other videos where I've shown how cancer rules orchards and gardens. Um, this was in my garden that my house, my property I've planted. I have more than, if you have more than 15 fruit trees in good standing, you're technically an orchard. So I have like 25. So I have, I am technically an orchard where I live in. I planted them all myself and it is a big source of pride for me because I'm not really, I had to teach myself all that stuff. Um, and so again, the Leo stuff like that. So I was just devastated when, when all these peaches were gone, the first harvest, you know, and it was looking so good. The 12th Lord is the moon and it's at 16 degrees and it is separating from the sun. So it's showing like I'm separating from this thing and it is in an openly unfriendly aspect. Um, when they're conjunct, that's what that is. And then uh, Mercury is retrograde in between these two planets. And Mercury is separating from the 12th Lord. And uh, that's the third and the second Lord. So it's the second Lord of food in, in what I'm eating. So I was going to be separated from what I'm eating, my breakfast that morning. Isn't that terrible? In the sign of the orchard, in the garden, my backyard. <sighs> Sun is in uh, Ardra next shot. Also, I was quite angry. Quite, I, I literally cried over this, you guys. And Ardra is the sign of wailing and crying. And in my last video on the eclipse, I talked about how Ardra means soaked or drenched or wailing. And it's sign, the sign of the next shot of Ardra is a teardrop or a sweat. And it's so perfect because I sweated so hard to get that tree planted and was so devastated by it. And, um, you know, so some weird karma there where I wasn't allowed to have those and it was a loss. Um, the other really interesting thing here is that um, the, uh, the, oh, I say this is about something else. The 10th cusp Lord is in the eighth. The peaches are already in someone else's belly or they're gone or you're not going to get it. That's another bad indication. Um, the, this is the thing that I wanted to highlight because this was really interesting to me. So um, the, the sun is like applying to Mercury, not in full orb, but it is there and Mercury's retrograding and they're openly unfriendly. So Mercury represents neighbors. It's the third house Lord. So it can represent neighbors or people nearby or, or a wild animal nearby that um, is unfriendly to me, you see, um, in the house of loss. And so I thought, okay, yeah, either a neighbor or a wild animal took them. And that's what I already thought. But the Mercury is separating from the moon, Lord of the 12th, and applying to the sun, Lord of the 1st. So it's like a nearby third house person, Mercury figure, separated me from the moon, the juiciness, the peaches, and uh, separated those from their territory, the sun. You know what I mean? And it was unfriendly to me, but they got to have the peaches. Um, 
What's also interesting is that the goods are ruled by Venus because Venus rules the fourth house and Venus is in the 11th and is really, really strong and it's friendly. It's openly friendly to Saturn, the seventh Lord, the thief. So they were very easy to get and friendly for the thief to get. <coughs> I don't have a fence or anything around my yard. Someone could have just walked up and grabbed them. You see, um, the Lord of the seventh is in an angle. The thief is in the place of theft. That's from the old books from Prajnatantra. I did a book review on that. Um, that's a good book to have if you like this stuff. Um, seventh Lord is in an angle. The thief is in the place of theft. So that makes sense. If it's a wild animal, it would be like hiding nearby maybe still, or if it was a neighbor, it's in my neighborhood, right? So that was interesting. The moon occupies the closest to the first house, so the peaches could be in the eastern direction from there, or the, or the person that took them and stuff, and that is actually somewhat true. Um, when Mars are, is in the seventh or the eighth, the, the wealth is in the protection of another person. The way I interpreted that here is that Mars in the, is in the eighth, which is the second from them. They're, they're eating, so they've already eaten them. Or you know what I mean? The peaches are already digesting in the fire of Mars in the belly. Um, so that didn't look good. Um, but you guys, here's what's so funny is, like I was saying, you can actually tell from the Prajna how good these peaches were, like the merit of these peaches, because the fourth cusp is the goods, and the fourth is being ruled by Venus. Um, the fourth Lord is Venus, and it's so robust here. It's retrograde, so it's super strong. It's delighted. It's in a great friend dignity. Um, it's... Uh, it's openly friendly aspect from Saturn, like it's getting. Um, it, it is with Rahu though, which is which we don't really focus on too much from Prajna, but again, that is showing that I'm not gonna get them. Then, <coughs> this is really kind of neat because uh, someone actually asked me about, oh, what do you think peaches are ruled by? Because I posted something about it and I was so proud of them. And I was thinking, well, all fruit trees are ruled by Jupiter, but within that, it would be ruled by Venus. Um, I don't think anyone would really disagree with that. I don't think you need to make a case for that. Um, but it's fascinating because this prajna basically validates that concept because the cusp the, of the peaches is ruled by Venus in this chart. It's quite strong. Now, the icing on the cake is that the Venus is retrograde over in Rohini Nakshatra. That's just perfect, isn't it? I mean, you guys who know your nakshatras, that's literally the juiciest nakshatra. That is the nakshatra that was the wife of the moon you know so the moon had these 27 wives that were the nakshatras were all his energies that he fed off of and grew from and he loved the rohini the moon the most you see the most juicy the most nourishing nakshatra that's where venus was at that's how good these peaches were i ordered these these were luther burbank peaches luther burbank was a devotee of yogananda my guru's guru my palm guru so we are like buddy disciples Luther Burbank did Kriya Yoga every morning. He was like a saint. He was like an American saint. And Yogananda dedicated his book, Autobiography of a Yogi, to Luther Burbank. And this guy bred the most amazing trees. And this tree is amazing. Like, I, it's not had any disease or anything. And he, I mean, he is a saint. Like, I really, he, he bred a cactus without thorns. He, he, he bred a cactus to evolve and not need thorns within like two or three generations, which is unheard of and impossible. And you can read all more about this in an entire chapter devoted to Luther Burbank in the autobiography of a yogi. But these were Burbank peaches. So that's like how much I, I just want to emphasize how much I really treasured and kind of coveted these peaches, right? Um, so maybe it was meant for them to be <clears throat> taken away. Maybe it was a good lesson there. But yeah, really just with Venus and Rohini, oh man, that's just really something. I'm not sure if this is going to come up on the video, but if you pull this pop-up window, you can read from the Taittiriya Brahmana, the red growing of Rohini, of Prajapati, the creator is water from above and receptacles of light or plants from below. So receptacles of light plants is literally a star of plants. Um, the red growing, it means like the blushing. Rohini literally means the blushing, like the blushing woman or the blushing goddess. It's a, it literally means a blushing woman, the word Rohini. So 
you have no idea how much these peaches were blushing. You know, when they were taken, they were like bright orange red, like just, oh, they were literally blushing. Isn't that amazing? So nakshatras definitely play into prajna and all this stuff as well. And I really, I really wouldn't recommend like trying to do it all just with that, but first get all the Rashi techniques down and then you'll start seeing how the nakshatras are kind of filtering in and coloring things. So this is like the star of, of like blushing and juiciness and there's a lot of sexualness and arousal involved and peaches are kind of associated with sexuality and venus and all that right and um really really fascinating it's a it's nakshatra ruled by the moon and it's a um datu one so stone but that's funny because it's a stone fruit peaches are stone fruits really a lot of details we're finding in this prajna and then um, the one last, mo one last note I didn't mention here is that I also looked at the sixth house for thieves because it's always important if there's a planet in the sixth that can also hint at the identity of the thief. And Jupiter, well, it's showing like Jupiter in the sixth house, you know, an obstacle to your fruit trees, right? Jupiter rules fruit trees. So problem, a, a debt, and paying a karmic debt, you might say. Also, Jupiter is kind of implying forgiveness, um, needing to forgive and accept that. Um, but it's kind of funny because it's also in the sign of Capricorn and Capricorn rules marshy environments. And I talked about how my house is in my environment is a Capricorn environment, although the garden would be more of a cancer environment. Um, so there is some overlap in my backyard <clears throat> with these two signs and you can see how heavily tenanted these two Rashis are one, two, three, four, over half the planets are in just those two signs in this Prajna. So, who stole the peaches? All right, so I really wasn't sure. I was very emotionally upset about it, and I honestly couldn't tell because it was too emotionally unclear when I cast this project, but I thought it's either an old man, there's an, there's an older man in my neighborhood who I sort of am not an odd, I'm a, kind of at odds with, or something I think he could have, I thought he might have taken them to try to get at me or something. Um, and because they're wide open, like a lot of people in the neighborhood could have seen them, actually. Um, and... Then I, but then I thought it was a wild animal too. Um, more likely a wild animal. <clears throat> so it turned out that it was actually two baby raccoons and a mother likely because, okay, so basically I had this older raccoon that's been running around and getting stuff and it has a limp, okay? So, and then there were, uh, but I wasn't sure if it was him, but then the next night I was out gardening, these two baby raccoons crawled up to me right while I was right by the fruit tree gardening, I was harvesting some cilantro, and then bam, these two baby raccoons are like making a noise at me, like trying to, they're like, can we have more fruit? I, at first I was like so angry, but I was like, I cannot be angry at you guys, you're so adorable. And um, they had, you know, they were basically like begging for more fruit and they were like circling the fruit tree and like trying to climb up it and like even trying to bite the leaves and it was so adorable. And um, they actually even broke the top of the fruit tree, I realized the next night trying to get the last fruit from it. So really kind of funny because it was a pair, it was twins, like with all this Gemini energy and the Gemini eclipse, but it was two baby raccoons and also a mother, um, that has a limp, so Saturn. So look at how the seventh house is Saturn. The thief was Saturn, so it was a wild animal. Saturn, like I said earlier, rules the quadruped form. So it was a four-legged animal, but then what's weird is that Aquarius was biped. So that's why I kept thinking it might be a human, you know, because Aquarius is a biped Rashi. Well, raccoons are actually kind of biped. They're the most human-like of the uh, animals that we have around here. I've always said that raccoons are like the, kind of like the, the closest thing to a monkey that we have in our area. And so this was really fascinating. Um, yeah, so uh, Saturn, the nature, the wild animal aspect <clears throat> really came out and then Saturn is crippled. So it rules a crippled raccoon, you know what I mean? A crippled quadruped. Um, this is the craziest thing though, is Saturn is in Shravana Nakshatra. Shravana Nakshatra, is literally the nakshatra that's called the cripples of Vishnu, or it's about being crippled. And um, it that's one aspect of it. It can rule a lot of things, of course, but it has to do with um, that word shrona or crippled. It can also mean like experienced, cooked, 
<clears throat> like someone who's walked a long way, someone who's seen a lot of things, someone who's got a limp as a result, you see? <clears throat> um, and it's ruled by Vishnu. And raccoons are ruled by Mercury, and Mercury rules Vishnu. So it's all kind of connected there. And raccoons, they are said to relate to the warrior and Mars in some traditions, but I've always felt that raccoons relate a lot to Mercury because they're bandits. They steal you. They're tricksters. They wear a little bandit mask, you know, and Mercury rules thievery and, and bandits. But, um, like, they're uh, really clever, too. They have that kind of clever, trickster, intelligent. They can open the door doorknob of a house. They can get into, into a house. They can get into a barn. You know, they've, they've been seen opening doors and doing really intelligent things. They have little hands, you know, which symbolize the articulation. I was hoping Hasta would be involved, but it was not. Um, so that is really interesting um, because Mercury was, remember, Mercury was the lord of the third house of neighbors that was doing the separating. And Mercury is Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu is known as Hari, the monkey. Um, like I said, monkeys are very close to raccoons. Look at this. The yoni of Shravana is the monkey. That's the uh, animal yoni form, which is probably, you know, really close. And then here's where you see the, the cripples of Vishnu are inquiring ideas from above and the paths from below. So it's really interesting. <clears throat> we saw quite a lot of details in this one. And the sun is the karaka for trees as well. So Mercury was like, you know, separating from the fruit to, you know, the, the tree, the fruit from the tree, however you want to put it with that moon, sun, Mercury separation aspect in my 12th house. So it's really interesting. Um, and, the, and the raccoons were also children. So I think that speaks to that Jupiter being in the sixth house of the thief or of the identity of the thief or of the delay or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so I think that's everything that I had, every little detail that I had found on this prajna. It was a lot of fun. And I hope you guys learn uh, a lot from this example and learn how to use details and um, to plug in to, you know, get the best, get the most insight you can out of each chart. Thanks, you guys.